I, uh, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Joshua. And I want you to open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1. Amen. And what I want to talk to you about this day is it takes courage. Amen. It takes courage. And uh, when we talk about it taking courage, many people are stuck where they are in life because they lack courage. Amen. The things that belong to people, they're forfeiting because they what? They lack courage. Um, there are, how can I say it? There are um, steps that God wants you to take. There are places that God wants you to be. And the only thing that stops you from getting there is a lack of courage. And um, so when we talk about courage, um, so many people lack it. I'm, 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 I just keep echoing to me that people lack courage. People let anything happen to them and they don't respond. Or they let anything get in their way and they don't respond. Amen. And so because of that, you cannot claim to be an overcomer if you don't ever go forward and overcome. You got me? So uh, Ms. Jade is going to read for me um, in Joshua, the first chapter. She's going to read from verse 1 to verse 5. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses ministered, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I give to them, even the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. For the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall, no, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. All right. Now, as you look at that passage of Scripture, God has chosen Joshua to replace Moses. Moses was actually the leader of Israel, and so Moses died. And so when Moses died, God spoke to, again, Joshua. He chose Joshua to become the leader, again, of Israel. You got it? Now, in choosing Joshua, let's remember some things, okay? First of all, Moses was the leader. Moses, while he was leading, he faced a lot of opposition, a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems dealing with Israel. <laughs> In other words, dealing with the people. But the thing that God did for Moses is God promised Moses that he would be there with him and that nobody would be able to overcome him. Nobody would be able to stand in his face. You got it? So now he turns around and he talks to Joshua. And he has given Joshua the same promises that he's given Moses. Y'all got it? So he's given Joshua the same promises that he gave Moses, all right? Now, the Israelites had escaped from, of course, the slavery they were in, okay? Except in one place. Except in one place. Their minds. They were free physically for the most part. 
But for the most part also, they still had minds of defeat. They remembered what Pharaoh had done to them. And those things that they went through, watch this, put caution in them. Matter of fact, not just caution, but fear. And so when God is talking here to Joshua, he gives Joshua some specific instructions. Amen? He tells him that just like he was with Moses, he's going to be with him. He tells him just like this. He says, uh, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you, just like Moses. So what God was doing with Joshua at that time was God was strengthening Joshua. Uh, God was encouraging Joshua. Y'all got me? And so, oh wow, this, this thought just came to me. We're talking about the almighty living God. Unfiltered talking. Y'all to hear that. It came to me, and I just want you to hear this again. It was unfiltered conversation. In other words, nobody was relaying the message to Joshua. Joshua was getting it straight from God's mouth. Like, can you imagine you in that position, in that place like that, and God thinks so much of you, it is not filtered through anybody else or any other source, but straight to you? Oh, come on. Well, let me tell you a secret. He does that. You might not think he does that, but he talks to you unfiltered. Every time I get a nugget, I give it to you. It's not a problem. You got it? So it was, it was straight up to Joshua. You got it? Now, again, Joshua had to take Moses' place. It's an assignment. Would you an assignment? assignment. Say it again. Assignment, assignment from God assignment. is what he was receiving. Now, all of us as God's children, all of us, every one of us as the people of God, we have assignments in our lives. Every one of us. It's not just preachers, it's not just deacons, it's not just the board or anything like that, but all of us. We have a specific things that God wants us to accomplish in this earth while we're here. And let me tell you a secret about that assignment that you have. Nobody else can do it but you. If you don't do it, it's not going to get done. I heard people say, and I, 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 to a degree I kind of agree, but at the same time I don't. If you don't do it, God's going to get somebody else to do it. No. If you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Can you hear me? There are things that God has given you job-wise. God has given you career-wise. I say it like that. God has given to you to accomplish in your life. Amen. And so the main elements that it's going to take for you to accomplish that is being strong and courageous. Can y'all hear me? Oh my. <laughs> okay. I, I kind of, Father. You can't be weak. I say it again. In the kingdom of God, you can't run around being weak. Because if you're weak, the enemy is going to roll over you like Rover. Because he will always confront you in the things that you have planned or have planned for your life. And he'll always try to get you to back up from the things that God has told you about your life. And he'll always try to get somebody else to block what you're doing. Amen. Okay. 
with what Moses was doing, had done in his life. And Joshua watching Moses all this time. What would go through your mind if you was in Joshua's position and you saw everything that Moses did and then God turns around and tells you that you're going to replace Moses? What would you do? What would you think? How would you feel? Because some of these things that God tell you and God assignments they give you, they are challenging. Some of the things that you want to accomplish in your life, some of the visions, the dreams that you have, they are without a doubt going to be challenged. So that means there's difficulty in the things that you want to do. That means there are, there are situations where it's not going to be smooth all the time. Y'all can't hear me. Hello. If you want that dream to come, you can't sit around waiting on God to make it happen. Can y'all hear me? Because God is looking for motivated people to do what needs to be done. Now, let's, let's, let's look at something. Just, let me just sidetrack just a minute. The disciples that Jesus chose, every one of them were doing something before Jesus called on them. Look it up. Read it. You'll find out every one of those disciples were busy. In other words, there were people that were doing something. If, if you were not doing anything but laying on your backside, you were not qualified. He didn't choose you. Well, I'm a nice guy. I love the Lord. But you ain't doing nothing. And God does not choose people that's not doing anything to do anything. Why? Because he wants what he wants done to be accomplished. Okay, I got it for you. I got, I got this for you. Y'all look at me all strange. I got this for you. I got this for you. Life itself won't choose you. Because you do nothing. I'm not talking about you. you know, I'm not personally saying y'all. Unless it fit. If the glove fit. So the bottom line is, is God is looking for people he can call on. God's looking for people that are doing something. God's looking for people that will walk in courage. Let me, let me say it like this. Some people are light years behind where they're supposed to be. The nurse is coming, don't y'all worry. Praise the Lord. So now, watch this. Let's, let's, let's go on through some things. Look at, um, look at Joshua 1, verse 6 through 9. Would you read that? Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thy divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. For thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. Through nine. Th through nine. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. It's two words. 
Would you say two words that stand out in that passage? Be strong and courageous. He said what? Be strong and courageous. In other words, to be is a condition or a state of being. You got it? So I'm not going to try to be. What he's telling him is to be. Okay. You, you, in life, there are things that you want to do. You want to be an engineer, but you, you're just out of high school. But you know what you're going to have to do to be an engineer? Is be one first. In other words, what's in you has to come out of you. What's in you has to be that, and then you work it out. You are not automatically, watch this, going to accomplish something that's not from the within you. It's got to be in you first before it can come out. That's why, that's why I, I don't believe that leaders are born. I believe leaders are trained. Because what's in you has to be trained to come out of you. Do people have strengths? Yes. But that doesn't make you, watch this, automatically what you're supposed to be. General, General, General George Patton was one of the uh, most courageous soldiers there was, one of the most powerful generals the military had ever seen. Hello. But he was it on the inside before the outside. This man was so, so, so it, he promoted himself. I got to hear what I'm saying. He was a two-star general, and he felt like he should be a three-star general, and he promoted himself to three-star general. That's not, that ain't no joke. That's the truth. Promoted himself. Why? Because he felt like that's who he's supposed to be. <laughs> so you have to be, watch this again, strong. God said, be strong. And very courageous. In other words, there are levels of courage. Wow. Why would I say be very courageous if there were not levels of courage? David had to be a man of courage. David defeated the bear, the lion. And Goliath. David approached the, the camp of Israel and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's come against the host of the armies of the Lord? All of the rest of Israel cowering, scared. David, the young man, he steps up and said, Who is this? Where yet? Show him to me. So David was a courageous man, watch this, because of the experience he had already had with God. Because he defeated the lion, he defeated the bear, but now watch what David didn't do. He didn't take the credit for himself. He said, God did that. I'm just a vessel. So his confidence was in the fact that if God did that with the lion and God did that with the bear, who is Goliath? And so there are challenges, there are things that you come through, and as you go through certain things, your courage increases. And so therefore you be. How do you see yourself? What do you see yourself being? Who are you? What are you? What you doing with who you are? Let me, let, me, let me ask you that question again. What are you doing with who you are? You can claim all you want to be to be a, a, a CPA. That's what it's called. 
People handle the money, right? But what are you doing to be that? You can't sit at the house with your hands folded on your lap talking about you a CPA. I love that girl. She always make her pastor laugh. I like that. <laughs> that let me know you with me. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> All right. So, so the Lord had to tell Joshua to have courage. And the reason they had to tell Joshua to have courage is because Joshua is about to take on something that he never took on before. Now, let me ask you a question. What, what, what is it that you need to take on that you have never done before that you allow and fear to keep you back? Where, what, what is some things that you said to yourself, oh, I can't do that. And so you say, this this, this thing, I'm, I'm happy where I am. But then you're still drooling over what other people have. You know, I'm, I'm, oh, no, I don't need all that. But your mouth's still wide open drooling. <laughs> Come on. Because you justify your position because you won't put forth the effort to go forward. What God was telling Joshua this whole time is to go forward, get moving. He didn't call them to sit still. He called them to Joshua to take them to some other places. So, where are you going? What's keeping you from getting there? Why are you not there already? Because some things you should have done two years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago. 100 years ago, should have already been done. But you procrastinate because of your fear. But let me tell you something about fear. It's something that overcomes fear. That would knock fear out, fear out of the park. It's called love. Guess who's love? God's love. God's word says this in 1 John. He says, perfect fear or fear, cast, uh, love, uh, perfect love rather, love cast out fear. So if love cast out fear, then you need to receive God's love so you would not what? Be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That's why you got to renew your mind. That's, that's why you got to renew your mind. Because you are not going to be able to go any further than your mind lets you go. You know, it, it used to be that, I think they still use it even to this day. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Because so much of your life is based on the condition of your mind. And God has equipped you with everything you need. You know what Jesus had the nerve to say? In the book of Luke 17 chapter, do you know what he had nerve to say? <laughs> Jesus has got some nerve. Think about him. He said the kingdom of God is in you. Oh, no, come on. Jesus said the kingdom of God is where? It's in you. So anything that you need First of all, it's found in you. Anything that you want, first of all, you have to find it where? In you. And then they had nerve enough to say, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So if the kingdom is in me and God's pleasure is to give it to me, whatever is in the kingdom is already here and God will release it into my life through faith but I can't be scared. You need to get 50 of them stickers and put them in your face. Ain't scared. Ain't scared. Because, because 
if you're afraid to do something, guys, then you won't make it. You know, people say, oh, if you're scared, do it anyway. That ain't what the scripture say. The scripture says, if you fear, if you're afraid, you're not going to win. I'm paraphrasing that, of course. You got me? So the thing you do, if you're afraid, you back up yourself from that. Get some courage in that thing. Encourage yourself. You ever seen a, a somebody lift weights, heavy weights? And the first thing they do is they start talking to themselves. <laughs> and you think it's a crazy man. But what they're doing, they're pumping themselves up. They didn't call on their brother, their cousin to come and, 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 and pump them up. They pumped themselves up. Then they attack that weight and they accomplish what they're doing. You got you to learn how to encourage yourself. I, can I tell you, I don't care who it is. Nobody going to encourage you like you. Don't nobody think nothing about you than you think about yourself. People will, will step on you, use you, misuse you, and tell you they love you. You have to take on responsibility to be strong and courageous yourself. And you know what? Sometimes being courageous look ugly. It look like you mean. Amen. And so people are going to talk about you. Oh, mean thing. I can't stand them. They're this and they're the other thing. Uh, here, they, here they come. Here they go. Oh, child, here they come. With their old mean self. No, because you just don't know what it takes in this life. You think Jesus was a clown? Amen. I ain't saying don't have no sense of humor or anything like that. I'm just saying there's some things in life that you're going to have to take a stand in and people are going to have to know your stand. <laughs> you know who some of the most successful people are? It's people that know how to be courageous. Because if you got 50 cents and you scared to let it go of a quarter. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Girl, come up here and sit up here. <laughs> no, if, but if, if, if you're afraid to let loose some things, you'll never gain anything. You have to be courageous enough to stand up and let some things go so it can come back to you multiplied. That's why, oh, 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 oh. That's why you, Jesus, that's why Jesus said you have to pull with you always. Because poor people, for the most part, in some, when a lot of things, they're afraid. And if they get something, they're scared they're not going to have any more, so they hoard it. This is the first time I had $50 in my life, and you think I'm going to give you $25? Come on. Or, or even, I'm just I'm making it little things so you just to get you to understand what I'm saying, because there are greater things that you have in your life. There are greater things that you have to go to that you're going to have to invest first. You have to let go of some of the things that you have yourself. What do you think it cost Joshua to lead? Come on. What do you think it cost him? He wasn't every day just, just chilling. No, he had to deal with folk. He had to give of himself. He had to let people, some people go before him 
instead of him going first. Look at his life story. Look at his life story. He was such a, he was such a courageous man. Listen to what I'm saying. He was such a courageous man that when God sent the spies over into the land, the spy out the land that he had promised them, he was one of two people right. out of 12 that came back and said, we can do this. And the other 10 came back with evil reports, the Bible say. Because what they saw there, shit, come on guys, what they saw, they didn't think they could accomplish it. What they saw put them in a condition of fear. And because they were in fear, they said, we can't. Why can't you? They got giants over there. Are you crazy? Have you seen the, 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 the grapes over there? You seen this over there? All this stuff. You see all that and what happens? It puts fear in people. And the things that you got to do in your life, you're going to see some giants. Hallelujah. You're going to see some things that are just really a real challenge. Amen. Can I tell you a secret? The devil likes to intimidate. You know what he does, though? Let me tell you a secret about him. He ain't got one lick of power over you. <laughs> the only thing he has available to him, if you really want to wake up to it, is deception. He tries to deceive you into thinking that he got you. And the funny thing about it is he's successful so much in the Christian body that he overcomes. You are the overcomer, not him. You are the victor, not him. You have the strength, not him. God is with you. God never told Satan he would never leave him nor forsake him. But he told you. God never called him uh, more than a conqueror. God never called him the victor. But he told you that. So when it comes to, when it, we need courage, especially in this day and time in which we live. Can I tell y'all something else? I ain't going to be much longer. Listen to me. <laughs> Ooh, Father. Y'all here? Yeah. It's still in this earth plenty of money. Every bit of gold that God has ever made is still in this earth. Every bit of silver that God has ever made is still in this earth. All the minerals are still here. God didn't load up all the money and burn it up. Y'all got to hear me. <laughs> so you should not be afraid that you're going to run out. You have to have courage to gain. You cannot gain being afraid. courage. That's why you need courage in this life. You need courage. There's some things you just have to stand up to and say, I need courage. And then you have to be honest with yourself and you got to tell God that you need courage if you don't have it working. Amen? Because it is in you. Let's get it to work. Let's, let's get what's in us to work. But then you're told what you can't do. <laughs> that was the system agreeing with me. So y'all got to understand, but that, that was code. And that code was saying, he right, he right, he right, he right, he right, he right, he right. 
Amen. But you have to have courage. You want a house? Oh, but the market is this. The market is that. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. Well, but do you talk to somebody and get you a house? God ain't never gave you nothing in a sign to you that's going to just fall right in your lap. Even though he gave Israel the land of promise. All that promise land God gave them. Do you know they still had to go in and fight? You know what God told them, actually? You want to you know what he told them? He said, I ain't taking everybody out of there. I'm not going to take every challenge out of there. There's some things you're going to have to face yourself. <laughs> Let me tell you why God does that. Because if he took every obstacle out your way, you go in there and kill yourself. Because you just wouldn't know how to act. Can I tell you another secret? And I'm going to be closing in just a minute. Hmm? What you give somebody free, they don't appreciate. What a person has to pay for, they'll value it. If it costs them nothing, it won't mean anything. I remember when we uh, used to give out books and tapes and all that kind of stuff at the service. You, you got a $2 tape. And you say, who wants this tape? Everybody just jump up. Ah! Because it's free. $2. Then at the service, you say, why don't you go to the bookstore? It's in the bookstore for... Two dollars. Nobody passed by the bookstore. <laughs> but long as it's free, it don't cost you anything, you get excited. But some they cost you something. That's why who was it said to the Lord? Say, I would not, David said, I would not bring an offering to my God that cost me nothing. I will not give my God something that does not cost me something. What are you saying? I value God enough that I would not treat him any kind of way. <clears throat> so we'll get back to this real quick and we're done. So when you think about courage, do you put yourself at a disadvantage? Some people go to meetings to negotiate something and they already then put themselves in a loser's position because they don't think they're just, just as qualified or equal as the person they're talking to. Y'all didn't get that. <sighs> now, y'all excuse me. I'm going to have to just flatline it and see it. Okay? <laughs> Let's say you need a loan, and you need to see the, a board before they give you the loan or give you the money or whatever. And all that board is of a different race. And so you look at yourself and you judge yourself beforehand that you are of a different race and that you know when you go in there, they're not going to talk to you, right? They're going to look at you and put you down. So you have just put yourself in a position where you think less of yourself than you do others or the people that you're negotiating with. And if you cannot, listen to me, if you cannot see yourself on equal footing with that person, you're not going to win. People will treat you the same way you see yourself. People will treat you the same way that you see yourself. If you're scared, people can see that. They can hear the way you talk, that you're afraid. Do you know a dog can tell whether you scared him or not? A dog, no fear. 
That's the truth. Now, when a dog senses you ain't got no fear of him, well, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. When a dog senses you have no fear of him, then he'll treat you different than if he can smell that fear. So how you see yourself and how you present yourself, hello, is important. If you present yourself as scared, people are going to treat you like you're scared. But if you stand up and be courageous and represent yourself well, without fear, without shame, without any guilt, anything, then you're more than likely going to come out better than you thought. But you cannot go without courage. That's why the Lord says, be strong and of courage. Be strong. Be of courage. Don't go in there showing your, your, your fear to people. <laughs> and then, matter of fact, get rid of the fear. You put yourself at a disadvantage. You have no courage. Some people you got to stand up to and say stuff to them. I ain't saying that if I say that, I might lose my job. <laughs> so the job is your source. The job, hello, is who's holding you. Because what you're saying is I'm afraid to lose my job. I let them walk on me rather than lose my job. You got to love me anyway. That's why God did not want Joshua going into that situation being afraid. That's why he encouraged him. That's why he told him what he want. And the Lord commanded it. He didn't ask him anything. He commanded it. He said, and, and, and that passage of scripture says, the Lord commanded him. Didn't ask him if he felt like doing it. Didn't ask him anything about that. How you feel about it? Tell me how you feel. What, what, what's up? God didn't say any of that. He commanded him to be strong. Matter of fact, the scripture says, have not I commanded you to be strong and courageous? It's like my grandmother. She was slick. Grandma put you in a position well, you knew what she was doing, but she tried to rope a dope you. She could tell me, she said, Pat Boone. I don't know why she, I know why she called me, I guess, really, but she said, Pat Boone, do you mind going to the store up there for me? What am I going to do? Say, no, I ain't going. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what I call a congestion. Is a suggestion by commandment. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's the other way. It's a commandment by suggestion. She commanding you all the time, but trying to make you think you got a choice. <laughs> Y'all look at, take about two more years, you're going to find my word in the dictionary. <laughs> You know, they do, they do add new names or new words in the dictionary all the time. So y'all going to look up and congest what? <laughs> you got it. But you got to be strong. Got to be strong. You just accepted Jesus. We are so, so excited for the awesome decision that you just made. The best decision that you could have made in your life. Hey, we want you to do something for us. We want you to follow up. We want to know that, about the awesome decision that you just made and what God is doing in your life. So there are some ways that we want you to connect with us. Go to praiseone.org slash connect and you can connect with us there. Or you can leave a comment or a message under this video right now. We want to continue to support you as you go through this journey. Hey, subscribe to our channel and like this video. We'll see you for another upload soon. And remember, we are maximizing your life with the word of God.